My name is Jim Park. Today, I'd like to go over key considerations and watch outs that should get incorporated into our day-to-day -day workflow uh, within the context of tissue culturing. While many of these steps are basic uh, for seasoned scientists, it is still very important considerations and this should serve as a very important learning aspect uh, for any new aspiring scientist. Tissue culturing can be broadly divided into following four steps. For this video, we'll cover what we call routine monitoring step of the tissue culturing that are often performed on a daily basis. Let's start by going over overall monitoring of healthy cells. Please take a closer look. First, by examining cells under microscope, we can ensure that cells look healthy. You should not be seeing small debris or particles within your field of view, which would indicate cell death and possibly contamination. For adherent cells, you should not see noticeable detachment or floating cells. While adherent cells can be examined directly after placed on microscope, suspension cells will require a couple minutes of cells to settle down to the bottom of the flask before viewing. Overall, the morphology of the cell should resemble what is indicative of the expected cell lines. Often, this information can be found from the vendor website or published papers. Nowadays, we also often use web-based searches to take a quick look at the morphology of the requisite cell types. Now let's talk about the concept of population density. Another reason for microscopic examination of the cells is to ensure adequate population density within a culture vessel. A typical growth curve is shown here. Cell numbers are plotted on y-axis, culturing time is plotted on x-axis. Blue line indicates overall growth. Initial phase is characterized as a lag phase, where cells are adjusting to the new microenvironment and exhibit no or very little growth. These cells will then enter logarithmic growth phase as they start to actively proliferate. Later phases are characterized by stationary growth and eventual population decline due to cell death. As shown by the images, you can see that as cells grow, they will run out of space to grow. When cells run out of space to grow, this will also cause cells to slow down or stop their growth and alter their biology. Under microscope, we can easily check over a percentage of flask surface covered by the cells. This is commonly referred to as confluency. Usually, we target around 80% surface coverage or confluency before trypsinizing and passaging fraction of cells into a new flask. In next video, we'll cover the cell passaging steps in more detail. Please note that the idea of confluency is somewhat irrelevant when it comes to suspension cells, since flask coverage of settled cells will vary depending on the concentration of cells and the volume of media these cells were grown. For example, suspension cells grown to be 10 million cells in 10 milliliter will have same confluency compared to 10 million cells grown in 20 milliliter. So please keep that in mind as you examine suspension cells after you allow them to settle down. Another key aspect of routine monitoring is pH check. As they grow, cells will consume oxygen and nutrients and will generate waste product such as lactic acid into media. Whereas most normal mammalian cell lines grow well at physiological pH of 7.4, accumulation of lactic acid will reduce pH. This can be effectively checked by looking at the color of media, which contain phenol red as a visual pH indicator. As cells grow and waste build up, pH of media will drop and the color will change from red to yellow. Now let's switch gears and talk about contamination. Gross contamination can be easily checked by looking at the flask. Media should not appear turbid or cloudy. In addition, media should not exhibit rapid color change to yellow, which should indicate presence of rapidly growing bacterial contamination. Additional signs of contamination can be checked under microscope as well. These include slow growth, change in morphology, unusually high level of cell deaths, and floating cells and debris. One particular contamination that I would like to call out is mycoplasma, 
which is often called silent cell killer. Mycoplasma is a submicron sized bacterium and therefore cannot be visualized under routine microscopic monitoring. Due to their small size, they can easily attain concentration of about 100 million bacteria per milliliter without causing turbidity of the medium. They lack cell wall and therefore commonly used antibiotics such as penstrap are not effective against them. While they usually do not kill the infected cells, they will alter the overall physiology and functionality of infected cells. If you notice your cells are not behaving in expected manner, such as slower growth or change in morphology, it would be a good idea to test for the presence of mycoplasma through commercially available kits. Now you have it. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please leave any comments below, but also check our website. Thank you.